Hello and thank you for watching. This is STSC back again with LEGO Transformers Revenge of the Fallen Devastator version 2. Looking back, I wasn't particularly happy with my old Devastator. It was already a few years old when I recorded the video for it, and I think it really shows. I've improved a lot as a builder since then, and I felt it was time for a Devastator to get a facelift, or really a complete overhaul. Most of these builds are completely different from the last versions, and only share surface level similarities. In general, I try to make the Constructicons more solid this time, and give them a more unified, simplistic aesthetic. I think pretty much every component is a massive improvement over the last version, and it leads to a much more fun transformation and a more accurate Devastator. But without further ado, it's time to look at each component separately. I'll be looking at the Constructicons in the same order as last time, so we'll be starting things off with Buckethead here. One of the first decisions I made when building this Devastator was that treaded vehicles would all use rubber treads. The last version had brick-built treads on the treaded vehicles, and I think that just looked bad, especially when there were characters with rubber tires on the team. Buckethead's bulldozer mode here is actually a little bit less accurate than last time. It really looks more like a bobcat than a bulldozer to me, but that was to necessitate a better hand mode in Devastator's combined form. Considering how little screen time this guy got in the movie and how hard it is to actually see the bulldozer in the scene, I'm fine with the inaccuracy, especially since I think this alt mode actually looks pretty cute. And here he is with Prime and Megatron. I mentioned in their videos that I built them to go with another mock, and Devastator was the mock I was talking about. I'll be using these two as scale comparisons for every component of Devastator. This time around, I built alternate components for every character who has one in the movie, so for Buckethead here, I actually built a little scrap metal. So getting Buckethead out of here, you can see that scrap metal is a tiny little excavator. He's a little chibi looking and looks a bit cartoony compared to the other Constructicons. He's a very simple little build and is able to replace Buckethead as Devastator's arm. A quirk of the build is that he actually kind of balances and can teeter-totter on the treads. And last but not least, here's Prime and Megatron. Up next we have Payload, who looks pretty similar to how he did last time, but is built completely differently. This guy is a whole lot more blocky and simplified than he was last time, and has a lot more solid and fun transformation to him. The one unfortunate downgrade is the cab up front has a visible stud on it, which is necessitated by how he transforms. And here he is with Prime and Megatron. On to Rampage, I think he benefits a lot from the rubber treads. It makes him look a lot more like a real bulldozer, and I think it just looks great. Like all the others, I made him a lot more blocky and simplistic in terms of build, but I think it makes for a much nicer aesthetic, ultimately. And here he is with Prime and Megatron. Just like Buckethead, he has an alternate component, and it's his red variant from the film. It's the exact same build, but in red this time. I like it a little bit less, because I enjoy the classic yellow construction vehicle color for him. On to Hightower, this version has a lot more detail and ends up being far more accurate to the real vehicle. The last version had a singular brick counterweight on the back, whereas this time it's separated out into the accurate formation of having two on either tread. There's also this little armature here, which was completely missing from the last version. Turning him around, you can see that there is a little bit of a combiner peg poking out the back, but it's a lot less egregious than the last version. And of course, Prime and Megatron. Last time, Mixmaster was heavily compromised for the combination. He ended up forming the lower jaws of Devastator, and they pretty much hang out the back. But this time around, you can see it's perfectly clean there, and there's no red to be seen, because now the entire head comes from Scavenger. While that means he contributes less to the combined mode and has a less interesting transformation, it improves the truck mode so much that I think it is a overall improvement. And bringing in Prime and Megatron, I think this scale works pretty well with Mixmaster and Optimus. I'm not sure if those trucks actually scale like that in real life, but to me it makes sense. Long Haul ditches the inaccurate lime green and red stripes for a more subdued meta green and black color scheme. 
My original long haul was more so based off the original toys, whereas this time I tried to go for more of an actual screen accurate look. That being said, he isn't entirely accurate. He honestly looks a little bit stretched out compared to the real vehicle. I feel like the wheels should probably be a little bit bigger and closer together, but I still think this looks like a pretty cool little dump truck build. Unfortunately, this version does lose the functionality of having a proper dumping bed, and there's only a hinge here for transformation, which, well, that just looks dumb. And I think he looks properly huge next to Optimus. Scrapper is a little bit smaller this time around and ends up with a asymmetric back end. You can also see there's that same combiner port hanging off the back, which again is a lot nicer than the old version, which had mixel joints hanging off the back. Devastator's elbow joint can be used to articulate the vehicle, and the front bucket is able to raise and lower. However, it's three separate parts, so it's very easily misaligned. And here he is with Prime and Megatron. Overload's new build is far simpler, and I think he's better off for it. The articulated point on the trailer is a lot easier to activate now, and it swings far more freely. The combiner ports up front look almost like gas tanks, and I think they actually blend in pretty well, and don't just hang out there looking ugly. Unlike last time, the bed of his truck is actually empty and could conceivably hold things, instead of just being a flat plane. And here he is with Prime and Megatron. Scavenger has shrunk a little, but he's still a lovely block of red and white. When I decided to use real treads on these guys, I was worried that the treads for Scavenger would end up looking too small. But in the end, I think they actually scale pretty well, and it doesn't really look unnatural to me. Unfortunately, some brightly colored Devastator kibble does end up visible on the top of the excavator, but considering how he has to transform, I don't think it's that bad. And of course, he towers over Optimus and Megatron. Scavenger also has an alternative component. In his case, it's Demolishor, the white excavator seen at the beginning of the film. And turning him around, you can see it's just white Scavenger. I'll be combining Devastator in groups of three, starting with the legs. Next up, we have the arms. And onto the torso.
And now Devastator is ready to combine. Here we have Devastator fully combined. I have to say I am in love with this combined mode. I think I really nailed the proportions this time around and it just looks so much better than version one. Turning them around so you can see slightly better view. Of course, because of the design, it is kind of difficult to see all the details from any one view. So I kind of have to do at least the full 360. So you can see every single limb in its full detail and I just think he looks incredible here. I think a sense of scale is much better conveyed this time around. I think it has a lot to do with the treads. It really makes it look like this guy is just made out of very massive vehicles. And it really makes him look big, even though he is actually quite small. I think it also helps that the head is a lot smaller and much more in proportion this time. Speaking of which, let's take a closer look at the head. I think it's a really effective simplification of the design, and while it misses a few details, I think it has all the key shapes and ends up looking pretty accurate. One unfortunate thing is that the eyes are lime green. I would have much preferred a translucent color, so they stuck out a little bit less, but unfortunately, as of the time of this video, this hollow stud doesn't actually come in any translucent green colors, and for the transformation, how these are connected, these studs need to be hollow. Moving to the arms, I'm really happy with the connection method I came up with for these guys. They end up clicking in really securely, and I think it's a lot nicer than trying to pop and swap mixel joints, especially since mixel joints have a tendency to crack on me. Taking a closer look at Scrapper's arm mode, I added a little circular detail here on the shoulder because I felt it was one of the more memorable details of his arm form. And I think it really helps to make this look more like a distinct mode than just a bent up front end loader. I also think the new hand looks a lot nicer and a lot more large and less awkward when it's on Devastator. Hightower and Buckethead's arm mode is a lot more chunky than Scrapper's. I thought that might look a little bit awkward, but once it's all combined up, I think it looks fine. I actually really enjoy how the forearm looks here with all these treads bunched up. Something about that just looks really cool to me. The hand isn't super accurate. There really should be more fingers in this, but I went for symmetry with Scrapper, and I still think this looks pretty darn cool. Devastator's legs have been made a lot more solid and chunky, and just like the arms, I'm pretty happy with the connection method. It is just a stud, so it can be a little loose depending on the part, but I have nice tight stud connections here, and it's pretty solid and easy to swap, and like I said, it's a lot nicer than having to pop and swap mixel joints. Rampage and Payload were the first two Constructicons I built for this revamp, and I think they form a pretty nice looking leg. There's some black on the kneecap here, which is meant to represent the tread that Devastator has there. Of course, Payload doesn't have treads, he has wheels, so it's kind of a fake tread there. Beneath that, there is the shovel, which is supposed to be on his knees, so it might be a little bit low, but it's pretty much where it's supposed to be. And of course, it's got the tread toes. These are actually mounted on joints that can pivot inwards to give them a slightly more accurate kind of bent in foot design but based off how long haul turned out i don't think it looks good to give this one leg a very small narrow foot when long haul is going to have a really massive one so i usually keep it out like that speaking of long haul i think he forms a really nice looking leg you can see i have the bucket forming the foot as it's supposed to and i actually have the wheel centered in the middle of the thigh like it's meant to be i think it's only one wheel on the cgi model but here it's both of the rear wheels unfortunately the other wheels are pretty close here on the knee they really should be down on the ankle i believe but i really don't think that's a big deal and i still think this leg looks pretty cool the way Scavenger and Overload connect was actually a happy accident. These studs just ended up lining up perfectly, and it ends up being a really nice and solid connection. When designing Overload, I made a conscious effort to make the part of him that would form Devastator's back dark gray. And turning him over, you can see there are some spherical little details down there. And of course, for size comparison, here we have the little guys, Optimus and Megatron. So, fun story, after a day of working on Devastator, I was ready to go to sleep. It was about 3am and pretty late in the night, when suddenly I had an idea. 
Wouldn't it be cool if I had a couple Transformers that actually scaled with Devastator? Suddenly the idea for a tiny little Megatron popped into my head, and I knew I just had to try it out. So I jumped out of bed and built this guy. The next day, I built a little Optimus to go with him. In the end, I'm sure the scale isn't actually that accurate. They probably should be a lot smaller than they are, but I think they scale well enough for me to be happy with them. And I won't lie, there's a part of me that is very tempted to waste a lot of money on tan bricks to build a little pyramid for these guys to hang out on. For articulation, Devastator's head is pretty much static in this mode, but the mouth can be opened on the transformation joints. It's just very fragile, so it's pretty easy to knock off one of these mandibles here. But if I'm careful, you can get the mouth open like that. Each arm is on an outward joint, which is actually the hinge from Scavenger's shovel arm. Then there's a forward joint where they connect, and a mixel joint elbow. And of course the fingers can all move, but they're a little bit fiddly. The other arm has all the same joints, it just has a lot more bulk, so it gets a little bit less range out of them. The legs connect by mixel joints and are able to swing forward and back, as well as in and out a little bit, but there's no articulation inside the legs. Devastator has a decent amount of articulation, but he can't really get into many poses because, well, he's a big chunky dog man. Now it's time to talk about the extra components. Rampage and Demolisher are transformed the same as their alternate color counterparts, but Scrap Metal, being a completely different vehicle than Buckethead, transforms a little bit differently. Each of the alternate components can be swapped in independently, but in the interest of speed, I've just combined Devastator with all three of the alternate components. Red Rampage does look a little bit awkward combined up, considering Payload is still yellow. I did consider making a red variant of Payload, but considering that never showed up in the movie, I decided against it. Though I might still in the future, because here it just kind of looks like Devastator stepped in some ketchup. In my opinion, Scrap Metal makes for a much less interesting hand than Buckethead, so I generally prefer to keep Buckethead as the hand. I think Demolisher works the best out of any of the three alternate components, and I decided to have some fun and give him the original Revenge of the Fallen toy style grey head, which I think is a neat little detail. He doesn't look quite as much like one single unified torso block when combined with Overload, but considering they still have the same color scheme, just inverted, I don't think it looks nearly as out of place as, say, the Red Foot Rampage. I am incredibly happy with Devastator. Not only do I think he's a massive improvement over my last version, but I think he might be one of my favorite Transformers I've ever built. All the components are nice and solid, and the transformation is a lot of fun. So that's all for now, and I'll see you next time.